One of the most important things advertisers can do is track our conversions. We need to be able to prove all the work that we're doing is really positively impacting the business, and Twitter ads is no exception. So conversion tracking in Twitter allows us to measure cross-device conversions after someone has viewed or engaged with a promoted tweet. Now let's run through the setup. I have my Twitter ads account open, and this is one I just set up to play around with just using my personal Twitter account. But no matter what account you're in, to start setting up conversion tracking, we need to go up to tools and of course, conversion tracking. Before you even start setting up any types of conversions, we need to make sure that the universal website tag is installed on your website. And to find that, we can click on this link right here. It says view code and installation instructions. Now, depending on what kind of website you have or what CMS you use, you can just highlight the code, copy it, and then paste it on the bottom of all your pages. It says right in the instructions in the first paragraph, it needs to go right before the closing body HTML tag. The way I typically add this conversion tag to a website is using Google Tag Manager. So let's hop into my Google Tag Manager account and we can show you how to do it this way. Once you're in your Tag Manager account, you can click on New Tags. Let's name our tag really quick. Under Tag Configuration, go up to the magnifying glass, and then we could search for Twitter. There, under the More option, we see Twitter Universal Website Tag. That is exactly what we need. First thing we need to do is enter in our Pixel ID. Now there are two ways to get your Pixel ID. One, I don't have the browser part of the URL showing in this video, but when you are logged into your Twitter ads account, the last component of that URL will be your Twitter ID. The second place where you can find your Twitter ID is exactly what I have blurred out within the HTML code portion for the Twitter Universal Website Tag Code. So I'm gonna copy my Twitter ID and go back to Google Tag Manager, and now I have pasted it into the tag. We'll go back to individual conversions later on, but for the most part, I just wanna get this tag added to every page of my website. So I'm gonna leave it as page view, and then when I go down to triggering, we can click on this block. I'm gonna select all pages, click save. Before I submit, I always like to preview my tag, so we can click on the preview button. And then let me open my website. We can see in the preview mode right here that the page loaded and my Twitter universal tag has fired. So I know it's working. So now jumping back into Google Tag Manager, we can leave preview mode and then let me publish my tag. We can click submit, name my version just so I know what changes occurred in case anything goes wonky after I submit and now I can click publish. And now my Twitter tag is live on every single page of my website. So let's hop back into Twitter ads again. Since I now have the website tag on every page of my website, I'm gonna click on return to conversion tracking. And since I just created it, the website tag is still pending, but now I'm gonna go up to create new conversion event. So on my personal website, the only conversion action that I consider important that a user can take is filling out the contact form. And this conversion on my website is a URL based conversion. This is the easiest kind of setup if you're using the Twitter universal tag. So as always, we need to name our conversions. Looking at the options for the type of conversion, we have a few options to select. We see there's page visit, purchase, download, sign up, and custom. This is just a way for you to put your conversion types in the specific categories. Mine technically is a site visit. They do have to visit a specific page on my website to fill out this form. By default, we're gonna use the universal website tag and that's already selected for us. You'll see why this makes things really easy. For whatever reason, if you're not allowed to get the universal tag on the website, you can use a single event website tag. But I've never run into the situation of not being able to put the universal tag on the website. To me, if you can put the universal tag on the site, you really don't need to do a single event website tag. So I'm just gonna go back to the default. Next, we can include traffic that meets any of the following conditions. There's all website visits, which I definitely do not wanna track as my conversion, so we can update this selection. You can choose an exact URL or the URL contains. From my conversion action, after someone fills out the contact form, they are sent to a dedicated confirmation page. I wanna make sure that portion of the URL for the confirmation page is added to this part of the goal setup. If need be, you can add additional conditions. You're gonna have the same options, exact URL or URL contains. You can add several conditions and that's fine. Just keep in mind the conditions work as an or factor. So I don't have any downloads on my site, but let's just pretend that I do. And also pretending that this is the download confirmation URL. In this scenario, if I leave this is the goal set up. I'm letting Twitter know, count this as a conversion if someone fills out my contact form or downloads something on my website. Again, you cannot set it up where the user has to perform both actions to count as a conversion, so keep that in mind. Next, you can set up your goal attribution window. The post engagement window can go anywhere from as little as one day to as long as 90 days. And for the post view attribution window, it's the same length of days. You can go as little as one or up to 90 days but if you really don't care about view through conversions at all, you do have the ability to turn that off. 
If you're happy with your setup, click on their terms and conditions after you've read through every single word of them, right? And then we could save the conversion event. Now we can see that the conversion event has been created. So let's go back to conversion tracking again. And that's how easy it is to set up website-based URL conversions. But what if your conversion actions on your website aren't URL-based? Sometimes when you're working on an account, you weren't around when they set up the website or the landing pages, and the conversion actions that are important to you can sometimes fire with events, and you have to track those events with Google Tag Manager. There is a way that you can do event-based goal tracking with your Twitter ads, and we're gonna run through that. So I went back to my website. Yes, my super old, haven't updated it in like six years website. But on one of the pages that I actually do keep up to date, there's a section where you can watch a playlist video of many of the appearances I've made on webinars or podcasts, that sort of thing. So for whatever reason, let's just say that action is important to me. If a user visits this page on my website, and they start watching videos from my playlist, I wanna consider that action a conversion. Especially when I'm thinking about Twitter and potentially more of a top of funnel approach, having someone engage with the video could be an important action to know that my top of funnel campaigns are working. So let's create a new goal in Twitter ads that is gonna be based off of an event action a user can take on my website. We're gonna to wanna to create a new conversion event. I already have this thing named. Since I don't see a video views option right here, I'm just gonna leave it as custom. Now, when I went through the universal website tag goal setup, you saw that the only options were website visit goals. For this option, we wanna use the single event website tag. And to potentially save you some time, you do have the option to automatically create a tailored audience from the single event tag. We have already posted a video that goes through all the targeting options you have within Twitter ads. And tailored audiences are custom audiences that you can create for remarketing. So in this instance, I'm creating a goal based off of anyone who viewed a YouTube video on my website. If I check that box, which I've already done, I can also create an audience to use for remarketing based off of anyone who viewed a video on my website. It's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. Even if you don't use it, that's fine. It doesn't really take any effort to set it up. Again, specify your custom attribution windows. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Check that terms and agreement again. And now we can save the conversion event. After the event is created, we now get a new piece of code that we have to add to the website. So in the instructions on the page, it's telling you to add it to a specific page of your website, but ignore that. We're talking about event-based conversions here. So let me highlight this entire piece of code. I'm gonna copy it, and then let's head back to Google Tag Manager. Again, we wanna create a new tag, name it, and for tag type, we wanna choose custom HTML. Here's where we can paste that single event code that Twitter just gave me. As for the trigger block, I have already created the trigger action to start tracking whenever someone views a YouTube video on my website. And if you're really interested in how to track video views on your website from YouTube videos, we already have a video created and you can check that out in the link above. I'm okay with this setup, so let's click save. And again, we want to preview. I am now in preview mode, so let's head back to my website. All right, this specific YouTube trigger will not work unless I start playing a video, so let's test this out. And there we see it, highlighted right there. So now I know I'm gonna track conversions every time someone watches a video on my website, and it's working. So let's go back to Twitter ads one more time. I just wanna end this video by showing you how you can add these conversion actions to your campaigns when you're going through the campaign setup process. When you hit the ad group portion of the setup, there's a few bid type options that you have while you're setting up your ad group. No matter which bid type you choose, you will have the option to change your optimization preference from link clicks over to website conversions. And then when I'm looking at the key conversion metric, here's where we see our main conversion actions where you can choose which conversion would be the main metric for this specific ad group. So whether you have URL-based conversions or event-based conversions, you will be able to add both of those options to start tracking performance for your Twitter ads campaigns. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.